Hey, it's Tom C, on co-founder of BuddyBoss. And today we're doing a podcast style conversation with Graham. And we're going to be talking about history of Buddy Boss, where we're going, all the different milestones we've hit over, the to- over time, um, the direction we're going, and we're going to make some big announcements along the way. And join me in this podcast with Graham, and I hope you enjoy it. So Graham, thanks for coming all the way to Dubai for this, uh, what do we call this, a conversation, uh, a podcast, a video? Your first podcast. <laughs> and this, this is the first podcast. <laughs> So, yeah. Well, thank you for to inviting me to your lovely place. I thank mean, you. Thank it's an incredible place <laughs> here. And, and obviously, this is the first time you've done this. Yeah. And it's a behind the scenes. It's a little breakdown. We're going to go through the history of Buddy Boss, uh-huh. talk about changes, uh-huh. talk about you personally, and, and the entire adventure and journey of you to where we are today. And, and the future. future. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. And so I'm excited. Is it? kind of about time we did something like this yes because i think everybody's always seen me on the monthly update videos and uh just a five minutes high energy video uh now you get to see me yeah the, the, <laughs> the full real tom Chadaddy, the full version <laughs> yes so i think we should really start with the beginning uh-huh. as to how we got where we are today obviously there's been so many changes across the the, the now 10 years working with Michael. You've worked with Michael for over 11, which is uh, incredible. But not many people know that time, right? Before Buddy Boss Platform. Yeah. Boss theme, you know. Yeah. Those days. Yeah. And we'll talk about the past. And we'll also talk about where we're going and all the exciting stuff that's coming. Uh, So back in 2013, uh, early 2013, um, I was living in Chicago. Uh, and working there and I was trying to get a second job and always in the same industry web Um, I've been doing web since I was 11 years old Uh, I've been coding websites since I was a little kid that was my dream Um, and uh, but then as we kind of progressed I moved from technical to more of a you know the business side of things Uh, but back in 2013 I applied for a job on Craigslist uh, Craigslist uh, is very well known in the U.S. It's uh, classified listings uh, websites, and um, I applied for the job there, and uh, I did an interview with Michael. Uh, and at the end of the interview, I was excited. I was like, "Hey, let's get going. Let's get started." And he's like, "Wait, wait, wait! I have two other people I need to interview." <laughs> <laughs> and I'll let you know if you uh, if you passed uh, on Monday. So on Monday, I am sick. And I'm laying down on my bed. Michael calls me. Uh, and that day I was so sick. I didn't go to work in the morning. I was in bed. I could not move. I didn't move from my bed the whole day. And Michael calls me. And I respond. And I'm like, hey, how are you? And he's like, hey, I picked you for the job. And I'm like, okay, great. He's like, when do you want to start? I said, whenever you, whenever you want. He's like, how about now? <laughs> <laughs> and it was like 8 p.m. And we started in that moment. I went to my desk. And I started working. <laughs> and you were doing the development then? I was doing a little bit of design, a little bit of development. Uh, and I was mostly working on the client projects we were getting um, through the sale um, of Buddy Boss Theme, which was the only product at the time, the old version of the Buddy Boss Theme, the, the original legacy Buddy Boss Theme. Uh, and yes, I was doing projects. Um, and I, and I was working two jobs at the time. Uh, so I was working on Michael's projects, uh, from 1 AM to 7 AM. And then I would go to the office and I'm back to sleep at 7 PM. <laughs> That's crazy because when you hired me, we had the same conversation and I was working two jobs at the same time. Uh-huh. So, <laughs> and how big was Buddy Boss at the time? Uh, when Michael hired me. Uh, he had one part-time person that was doing support, uh, on the theme and he had one part-time developer who was kind of on and off, who was helping him with the development of the product. Uh, and the rest of it was Mike and I, (laughs) yes. Uh, and then, so we worked together for, in the same way for about five months and then I moved to Miami and then I left my other job and I just focused on 
Buddy Boss. Uh, this was back in 2013 also, May 2013. Uh, and I continued working with Michael from there. Um, eventually, we moved into some kind of partnership where there was a kind of commission share and I was doing projects and um, paying commissions to Michael and stuff. And by June 2014, we decided to partner and go 50-50 into Buddy Boss and grow it together. And this is where we kind of shifted the mindset of um, from in that year, we were, it's, it, you know, I was, I was, um, gener we were generating profits in the company. Yeah. But in June 2014, we shifted into let's take everything we make, put it back into building products. Uh, and that's when we started building Boss Team. Uh, and then Social Learner came. And then uh, we launched a new website of, the, of Buddy Boss in early 2015 with the Boss Team launch, or I think around February 2015. After two months of insane work, me and Michael in Montreal, because I had moved to Montreal at that moment. Uh, I had just moved to Montreal. And we were working day and night in winter cold and, um, and uh, trying to get Boss Team out. And we did. And then we launched the other plugins that came after um, from other places. Then we started traveling and going to warmer places and working from there. And... Uh, launching the other products. Uh, but it was those initial years, I was working like day and night. Um, like literally, the, I, I remember not being happy with the time it would take me to go to my door to pick up my, my food delivery from the delivery person and come back to my desk. That's how much I was working. And I would go to sleep. Uh, um, I, would, I would go to sleep at night talking to uh, uh, Alyssa, who was my assistant at the time in in the Philippines, who was working with the rest of the remote team, and and I would wait. And as soon as I wake up, I would do a call with her to figure out where we're at, and then I continue working with the with the team that was on my time zone in North America. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yes, it's funny you mentioned Alyssa there because one of the things I've noticed since starting at Buddy Boss and the times as a customer, how many of the staff from years ago are still here at Buddy Boss to this day. Yeah, um, yeah. And how much they've grown, their roles have obviously changed a lot over the years. But yeah. There's a, there's a lot of core people at Buddy Boss who have really been there for most of this journey, really, especially the last four to five years. Yeah, Alyssa's on her 10th year now. Wow. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and there and there's others like Zarko and uh, Ayush. Ayush, of course. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yeah. So moving forward, obviously there's a big change in Buddy Boss when you started working on the Buddy Boss platform. Yes. So and yeah. How long does that take to develop? Like, what did that look like during that time? Because obviously you had the agency, you had the current themes, and and kind of managing the plugins you had there. Yeah. But you're also working in the background on what was the Buddy Boss platform. Yes. Um, in 2016, I was moving to Vancouver, and I was driving from Montreal to Vancouver. And on the road, I was like thinking, what do we do next? What do we, what's, what's the next thing? And I, both me and Michael started realizing that um, there was a better way to do things uh, rather than launching a theme and another theme and another theme and this and that. Um, we should have one theme, one plugin, one app, uh, one of each and do them really well and do the best we can on those products. Um, so that was the mindset shift, uh, in 2016. And that's when we started working end of 2016, we started working on what this new body boss team is going to look like. Now we don't have a, we've never taken outside investments. So all of these products have been invested, uh, into using the profits that we've made, uh, from the business. So we just take the money and put it back in to build better stuff. Uh, and we've been doing that since. Yeah. Uh, so, um, we've, so we've, uh, we've, we've come up with this new vision and we started designing it in 2016, uh, but we were not ready to launch body bus platform and theme till 2019, 2019. June, 2019, uh, is when we launched it. Um, at the same time, we had already begun the, the app journey. Uh, 
And we had launched, I think, the first version of the Buddy Boss app, which was under the App Boss brand. Um, I don't know if it's early 2018. It was in 2018. It was. Yes, early 2018. Uh, and at the time, we were not ready to scale that product. So we were working on it in kind of a half agency style, half product. So there's a product, but we're working one-on-one -on -one with the clients, with the, with the team, and building whatever features they're missing and helping um, adjust any integrations and things like that. But we were not ready yet for something that's scalable. Uh, and we kept iterating on that because we learned so much from that, uh, from, from, from App Boss uh, and running the earlier version of Buddy Boss app. Uh, and we've realized how many, um, you know, how many things that we didn't, we didn't, uh, we didn't think of. Uh, because we were, nobody had done uh, React Native mobile apps uh, for WordPress and for the plugins that we were doing, uh, you know, we we're doing them for. And there was nobody for us to copy. <laughs> There's nowhere to get inspiration. Uh, so we had to just figure it out on our own, which took a long time and a lot of trial and error. Uh, so that was not easy at all. That was probably... Not probably the hardest project of my life. <laughs> <laughs> and the technology we used then, you know, going React Native, there were so many other people doing apps, but it was all web view, right? It was yeah. all kind of not really an app. It was in a window. In fact, we spent the whole year, uh, we spent one year, I think from summer 2016 till summer 2017, building our app with Ionic, which was not native. Yep. And come 2017, we were not happy with it. But we started over. <laughs> which would have been around timely because Apple changed their services then, didn't they? They said, right, we're not allowing WebView. And there was always that, will this ever be acceptable in future? So uh, I don't remember about the WebView, but I remember about template apps. Yep. Uh, and the template apps were, they removed them I think it was summer 2018, no, or summer 2017. And at the end of 2017, they reinstated that, if I remember correctly. Something like that. Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah, they didn't want mass produce apps and they wanted apps that yeah. produced value. But that was only for six months yep. and it was removed. Um, so that was, that was good for us. Yes. Yeah. And as you say, App Boss was really funding the platform at that point. It was one of the big driving forces. So uh, at Boss, the agency, all the projects we were doing, the existing products, uh, Buddy Boss team, everything was funding the Buddy Boss app. Uh, and Buddy Boss app was, was also the most expensive thing we've ever built. Uh, yeah, it's years of development with, with a big team. And, yeah. uh, and the challenge at the time was getting the React Native developers to understand the WordPress developers and vice versa. Yep. Uh, and you had, uh, you know, developers on this side uh, saying, oh, this is not working because it's on the, the other side and vice versa. And we had to figure out how to make them work together. That was the challenge. Uh, but we've, uh, we, uh, we've overcome that. Yeah, we've come a long <laughs> way. I remember when I joined Buddy Boss, the amount of back and forth this is not an app thing. This is an API thing. And therefore, it's got to come from the platform team. And I've got to wait for them. And yeah. obviously, going back prior to, to the launch and, and how we've changed over the last couple of years, and it's quite just, challenging. And during this whole time, where were you? You were a customer, right? I was a customer, yeah. <laughs> so if we go back to 2015, uh -huh. I launched my BuddyPress community. Okay. And then I found Boss Theme. And so I switched to Boss Theme. Loved it. I got a custom app built. I actually inquired around at Boss at the time. So I spoke to Felicia and we uh -huh. went down uh, the, the, the costing and, and, you know, let's be fair, compared to the cost of that, like the Buddy Boss app, you were paying up front for an entire project. You know, you're on a one-to-one -one basis. Yes. And it was still cheaper than building it you're on your oh, own. Oh, absolutely. There's no doubt about it. <laughs> um, and I was like, okay, not yet, soon. And then you launched Buddy Boss Platform. So we go fast forward from 2015, I'm using Boss Theme, 2019 platform comes out and now I'm in a position I want platform I want all the features you've got 
I'm now going from 70 plugins to 25, you know, all of the little things that you added into this functionality. Yeah. But I had to lose my app to do it. Right, right. And platform, when you say you moved from 75 plugins to 25, this reminds me of something. I remember Mike, Michael getting married um, and the morning of his wedding, <laughs> I've not, he's working on this document, um, which was like 30 pages, where he's listing all the things he wants to see in Bolivar's platform that we need to build and deliver in 2019. Uh, and yeah, on his wedding day, <laughs> he was there working on that. And he was, and all of those ideas came from years of working with clients on the agency and basically seeing what the clients were requesting. Change this, move this. I don't like this. I don't like that. Um, and this was all the changes they wanted in BuddyPress. And there was a lot of patterns that we would find. And so Michael decided to apply all those patterns, all those you know new things that we've learned to this new product. Um, and that was Buddy Boss platform and theme. Um, and we've ended up creating a lot of new features that were that were not in BuddyPress. Uh, yeah. While doing that. Yeah, I mean, you forked BuddyPress to where it is now. The amount we've rewrote on components, the amount we've still got planned, completely new API. Yeah, I guess we've added a bunch of features. And, and, and we got to a point where now we have to start rewriting some of BuddyPress's features yeah. because they're holding us back for to doing some some other cool things. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, the feature list, even in 2019 when you launched, there were features every couple of months. There's something new, something new. And I think realistically... The minute I did the purchase and I was like, okay, my app is gone. Told my community, the app has to go. The web experience is going to be better than what I had. Uh -huh. And um, and the amount that you guys constantly churned out, Zoom integration, everything else, it was like, there's no regrets here. And my community are seeing this completely evolve over time. Yeah. And uh, so that was obviously all the way through to 2019. At that point, how big was Buddy Boss? Uh, 2019, trying to remember. So, first. Huh. All right, so let's, let me, let me go back a little bit behind. So I remember in January, 2018, we were 33. That I remember. Um, I also remember just before launching the app. So that's like mid 2020, we were around 70. Um, and then just post the launch of the app, we went, we moved to 150. <laughs> that is rapid growth, really, in, yeah. for, for this industry as well. And I remember, the reason I asked this, I remember emailing support on the day of the launch or the week of the launch. And it was you and Michael this is jumping the in. Yeah, you, you're you jumping in with the support queries back in the theme and on the platform and, and being, you know, yes. all over the place. The team was so much smaller. Yes. At the time... Um, we already had, you know, we had seen what it, what it, what it, what, what it was like to provide customer support on, uh, on our previous Buddy Boss products. Um, and what we were seeing is that customers wanted more attention, more help, more assistance. And given the economics of how things were working and how low WordPress type products are priced, uh, it was a challenge for us to grow that support team to be able to really um, assist, you know, people with so many different queries and so many, uh, with all the queries that they wanted. Yeah. So, and at the time, um, Michael had uh, just gotten married in the Philippines with a, to a Filipino. Uh, and we, we used to spend a lot of time in the Philippines. And I was aware that the Philippines was the call center of the world. Um, and I was like, I'm pretty sure I can find people who can run uh, proper support teams in this country. Um, and we could have a bigger team that can have that can help our customers better, uh, but can still make sense economically. Um, so we set up the first Philippines office just before we uh, launched Bodyboss team and platform. But we only had three people there. Uh, we were waiting for the launch to see what was going to happen. And when we launched the Body Boss team platform, 
it exceeded the expectations. It was like, wow, what is this? Like, it was beyond what we were expecting in terms of success. And we, we were stuck in support. Mike and I were like working every day, all day. Uh, we would not sleep that much because it was an adrenaline rush of the launch and, and, and uh, you know, that we need to make this happen and we need to make sure everybody's happy. And so I would have one, once a day, I go for a run. And then the rest of the time I'm just working and we're not sleeping that much. Um, and it was seven days a week. Um, and we were providing all this customer support, but I was like, oh, we can't be doing this forever. Like it was just like two, three weeks. Um, and immediately started, um, posting jobs back in the Philippines to look for technical support, uh, agents and, and, um, and we started, I started doing interviews and then I flew to Manila. Uh, from Vancouver at the time, we were living in Vancouver. Uh, both me and Mike were living there. Um, I flew to Manila and within 11 days, hired 25 people uh, and flew back to Vancouver. And we started pushing hard on the training and getting everybody uh, set up. And that was the birth of our Filipino office, which is now over 70 people. Yeah. Yes. And that is really the heart. I mean, as you mentioned, it, you and Mike spend a lot of time in the Philippines. I know when we went a couple of years ago, you were pointing out this is where we were when we launched Boss Theme. You know, there is a genuine, true love for that country yes. and a lot of fond memories of where Buddy Boss started in the Philippines. Yeah. And I'm right in saying you launched pretty much most of the plugins from. We launched the plugins from the rooftop of this building. And we were in this hotel and um, we, we, we launched a bunch of plugins from that rooftop. <laughs> we would just wake up and order food and order things and just focus on working until midnight. <laughs> yeah, so they closed the rooftop. That was that was our that was our office. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So transitioning then, platform launches, huge success. Uh, I remember seeing it everywhere, and yeah. we're all talking about it. Everyone's getting crazy, new features, new this all the time. The next step is obviously we've now transitioned from a company that used to try to launch plugins throughout the year to now it's a single product yeah and then we had covid yeah right? that launch between going from platform to covid and and what was the growth like for you there but also the challenges because now we've got a country a, a company that has an office has a growing team but yet we're all in lockdown yeah um which kind of launched the start of your update series right so yeah I remember when COVID started, I was in the Philippines um, um, and I didn't really take it very seriously because I wasn't watching a lot of news at the time. Uh, I still don't. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I I'd thought it was in Asia mostly. And I didn't even know it was that bad in Europe. Um, and I wanted to make sure that I'm, I don't get stuck in one place and keep moving around. And I decided to fly to Morocco, where I was born, uh, or a lot of my family is. Um, and I think four or five days later, they closed the borders. <laughs> but um, um, we have this beach house where I was filming all the videos from. Uh, and I we stayed there during COVID. Uh, and... Just before the lockdown, I went and set up my my new office in the beach house, and um, I I installed every internet provider that we had uh, <laughs> in that house. I bought a spare laptop just in case because everything is closed, uh, and um, and I and I got phones also from every operator um, just to make sure I'm foolproof <laughs> that I can continue working and and running the company, um, and. Um, and then I was like, okay, now if you want to lock everything down, do it. I don't yeah. mind. <laughs> I'm set. Yeah, I can, so I can get things together. done. Yes. And so the first video, video we've done was actually in Manila the day I was leaving just in the beginning of COVID. Uh, and it was just a morning I woke up and I realized how much stuff we were doing. And I was like, Hey, maybe I should do a video. And I did that. Um, but then it became this monthly thing. Um, and then eventually it was no longer a monthly thing, but that's another topic. <laughs> we will come back to that. <laughs> yes. Um, but yeah, so that was the COVID times. And 
in the beginning of COVID, we didn't know, we didn't know it was going to happen. So we were very cautious from a business standpoint to yeah. make sure that everything was going to run properly. The company is going to have enough cash to run everything we need to do. Uh, but then it turned out that COVID was good to us and uh, it helped increase the revenue. Our, our team sales were up. Uh, um, so it was, it was helpful. Um, and that's around the time we were preparing for the launch of the Body Boss app. Uh, which then happened in October 27 or 28 of 2020 is when we announced the pre-launch. Um, and at the time I had left Morocco once they opened the borders and I went to Canada back in Vancouver and I was working with Michael there and everybody and, and, um, yeah. And then just as we launched the body boss app, as we pre-launched it, I moved to Dubai. <laughs> which is where you've kind of settled now at this point yeah you, know, you you've, you've traveled back to morocco you you obviously have still seen the team and we've spent the last couple of years trying to see the teams where we can this is home now this is this is home place. and i love it and i feel like this is my true home uh because well there's a number of things that initially drove me to come here um um and first we're not gonna lie, it's zero tax here. So that was that was a big draw. Um, but it was also the time zone. Uh, our team is global, and being in Vancouver and running Body Boss, there are days where I had to wake up super early to handle some issue um, with somebody in Asia, and days where I had to stay up late for another call or whatever. And my sleep pattern was all over the place, and I did it for a number of years, but I just reached a point where I couldn't handle that anymore. Um, and the Dubai time zone allows me to overlap with everybody during the day. Yes. Uh, so I can still go to sleep at a healthy time. Um, and also the fact that I was working, you know, everyone in our, in our company works with their own little team. There's like four or five people that they talk to the most. I had to talk to almost everybody. And every day, I didn't know who I was talking to next, depending on what was happening. Um, so that was a challenge for me. Uh, so coming here to Dubai, um, I've been able to be uh, healthier and, and, um, and um, have a better, um, you know, just healthier schedule, better sleep. Um, it just, and and, and I, I couldn't keep up with that, no. with what I had in, in Canada. So <laughs> I needed this. But... I I was going to say, I think it's been very good for Buddy Watts employees and the company as a whole. Having two owners or two co-founders in the same time zone would very much isolate you from a lot of the company for most of those times. Having right. both of you available across the time zones mm -hmm. has absolutely helped share. That's true. That, that, has, that has helped for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Although I would like Michael for Michael to be. <laughs> uh, and, I don't, and I don't think it's going to be long before he comes here. <laughs> <laughs> so... Uh, every time he comes here, he says that he loves it. So uh, I'm looking forward to seeing him moving here. Uh, but yeah, so there's other aspects that have been very helpful. Uh, the fact that Dubai is very connected. And for, you know, the last two years, um, you know, after COVID, and even before COVID, I was thinking about this of like, I often need to be in the Philippines or India or uh, Bangladesh or um even the U.S. or Europe, and you guys are, you know, your team is, you you're, uh, you have a bunch of coworkers in, in London. Um, so Dubai being so central and having such good airlines, uh, Emirates and Etihad, it's just so easy to fly to those countries and come back without, you know, um, affecting your health too much. Because yeah. before it was just 14 hour flight to get to Manila and it was, it was too much. Uh, well, 12 and a half hours from, from Vancouver to Manila, but from here, it just, it just, everything feels easier. Yeah. Um, and even the time zone change is not crazy. No. So we're only four hours away from, in, t in terms of time zone from yeah. Philippines. So when you land there, you're not completely out of place. Yeah. You have a jet lag and, and yes. kind of just starting and hitting the floor and run straight with it as opposed to need a day recovery. And when you come back for and all of that. Exactly. And then. There's also the aspect that 
Dubai is probably, I don't know if it's the most multicultural city in the world, but it's the most multicultural city I've ever seen. <laughs> uh, and there's just people from all over the place. And it just reminds me of Buddy Bot because we are so diverse and we have the British, we have the Canadians, we have the Americans, we have the, the Bangladeshis, the, the Indians, the Filipinos, and just like Dubai, there's people from everywhere and it just feels like home. <laughs> yeah. And so we talk about when you came to Dubai, you were having a lot of health issues, right? You've yeah. been working a long time and you know, you've got health issues that this has really helped resolve a lot of those problems, right? Coming here and, and, and living here as opposed to doing the traveling, you know, a late night food on whatever line you get to where you get and everything like that. And the foods and the food and the, and the care and a lot of these things. Um, I, um, for the last, uh, 10 plus years since 2012, I had a IBS, um, irritable bowel syndrome. Uh, and it was a result of, um, I mean, I don't know how it started, but it's some kind of, uh, bacterial overgrowth or something in the, in the, in the digestive system, uh, that I've tried to fix for a long time, but I couldn't. Um, and uh, I've been following a diet, which has been easier to follow here in Dubai. Um, and I've uh, been eating healthier. I've been also doing some treatments here that have been very helpful. Uh, and I haven't had symptoms for a long time. Like, I'm feeling amazing now. Um, way better than I did before in terms of my digestive system. Now, I also had asthma. Uh, and that was also a problem for me. Uh back when I was in Canada, um, which is not so much of a problem anymore, uh, just because I had some really good care here with the doctors in Dubai. Um, and um, I don't know, it was just better than what I had experienced in Canada. Uh, and they gave me everything I needed and I've been able to recover pretty well. And so now I'm, I live a healthier lifestyle, although I still oftentimes spend 12, 14 hours on the computer straight. <laughs> but no. uh, that's buddy boss. <laughs> but, um, but overall, I'm able to, um, to live a healthier lifestyle. Uh, and that's important to me because I, I couldn't go on for more than 10 years living the way I did, which was just work, 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 sitting on a computer for the whole day until I fall asleep and then go to sleep. Yeah. That was super unhealthy, but it was a price to pay to get this, to get Buddy Boss where it is now. Yeah. <laughs> and what, I mean, because of the amount of launches you were doing prior to 2019, there's a constant push on your body. Yeah. I knew the amount of hours you work in, and I know the hours you still work. Yes. Um, and obviously, when the app launched at this point, that was a pretty hectic kind of six months of being live and, and six months prior to live, you know, the pre-launch and everything beyond that. That was so hard. That was so hard. Uh, by the end of the first six months of the Body Boss app, I was burnt out. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I was, I just couldn't, I, I just couldn't push anymore. And you guys took over uh, and the whole team was like pushing. Uh, but it was a really tough six months and sleep was not a, was not was nothing important <laughs> during those six months uh and we would stay up all night in the office uh here in dubai in fact my first three months in dubai from the moment i landed my first three months and this is my first three months living here i've only had one and a half days off this is weekend included yeah. i was working every single day and long days i would go home at like three in the morning Sometimes I don't go home at all. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, so it was really, really tough. Uh, but in the summer, it kind of hit me that, um, you know, what is it? It's like five months later, six months yeah. later, it hit me and I couldn't handle that anymore. So I had to chill and, um, and start, you know, start, start, start fresh again. <laughs> and at that point, you started surrounding yourself with a leadership team inside Money yeah, You know, you started delegating more with Michael building a team of people around you yeah, um, to help offload some of that at the time. That was big. Yeah. That was big because with the Buddy Boss app came the fact that we've hired some really good leaders, including you, 
including Jason and uh, uh, Mike, Mikey and, um, and, and Marcus. And so we had a strong leadership team and we had Sharon from the Philippines. We had a strong leadership team uh, that I, can count, I could count on and Shelby. Uh, Shelby was huge help uh, and has been helping with everything operations in, 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 within the company freeing me up to think about other things and not just be focused on um, employees and, and stuff like that or hiring and recruitment, stuff like that. So um, we've, you know, what, what used to be Michael and I has become this team of like six, seven people. Um, and that was a big shift. So finally, I could allow myself to let go a little bit yep. and... Um, and it wouldn't be a problem yeah. anymore. So that was big. Um, yeah. But then you talk about the next step after that is uh, we kept going. And then I come last summer, uh, I felt, uh, in, in you, you had worked in so many different teams in the company. You worked in support and customer success in the product. Um, and even when you were not working in all the teams, you were involved in every meeting of every team, making sure that you know about everything in the company. <laughs> I think that comes from the success side, right? I think with Buddy Boss, we had a, a lot of silo teams. If you're in development, you're in the product team. If you're in support, you're in the support team. And we didn't have a customer success. Yeah. Um, that's a different story because I applied for that role originally. Uh -huh. and, uh, and then you reached out and said, hey, we're looking for someone to, to work with support. Yes. But opening up that success role and, and again, with that Jason starting uh, the, the customer success side there and then obviously I took over. You know, in success, it's you're working across every team because it's what does the product need for customer success? Yeah. How can we improve support for customer success? What's the marketing angle looking like for customer success? And so you end up kind of working across every department, every team member, building up, understanding what's happening. Um, it's been a pretty crazy couple of years, I won't lie. But yes, obviously at that point you were like, you're in every meeting. Yes, <laughs> yeah, you were everywhere and you knew everything. And um, as I was taking a little bit of a step back and not working like crazy hours anymore, you started working crazy hours. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, wow, I, I, I could see you as what I was for the last 10 years. <laughs> so, and before you joined Buddy Boss, what were you doing? So I was working two jobs and I, we, we had a long chat beforehand. So I was working in a data center and then I was working for Buddy Boss clients. So I was doing web development with Buddy Boss clients. I had my community that a few years prior to that, I went for a year and just ran and, and that was great for a year, but the economy came and I was like, oh, let's go back to the nine to five. Then I, uh, I started doing client work. So I was working two full-time jobs. I did much like you, seven till two of, of an evening. And then I'd go to a nine to five during the day. Wow. And so, um, yeah. And so I was very much enjoying Buddy Boss and I didn't want to walk away from that type of experience. Web development just felt like a natural progression. So the long hours felt very natural to me. And it was like, but I can work at Buddy Boss. This isn't a job. This isn't, this is a passion. This is enjoyment. <laughs> You know, uh, even like off days became, well, I can just come and have a look at this or I can go help there. And then obviously my role changed and so we started looking more into the product, which was um, a big change. You know, the way we've changed the product from launching the app and, and obviously the platform to where we are today, mm -hmm. that team has grown tremendously. Yeah. We've restructured it. Yeah. We've got different leaders for, for both of the products. And I think that's been very instrumental to the change uh, mm -hmm. as well here at Buddy Boss. Yes. Yes. Um, not a lot of excitement for new features over the last couple of years, but a lot of foundational changes that were necessary for us to be able to go back to all the exciting new features and exciting new things and stuff. And just making sure that we're not held back but by what used to be buddy pressed yes uh and um preparing for you know the next phase of of buddy boss and so uh with mikey coming in and he's been he's wanted to structure to restructure everything yeah and how the product was built and how the product was designed and um and so there's a lot of 
behind the scenes work that has been done to just improve on the quality, on the on the way we work, on and on making sure that whatever we're building, we're building it on solid foundations, not stuff that can fall apart in the future. Uh, and that was that was basically his push. I feel like every team, look, every team since I've started has gone through this. Like when I started, we didn't even have employee onboarding. Mm-hmm. There was like yes. You started. We started at the beginning of the Buddy Boss. Started at, at the, yeah, literally the day of the launch. That's when we started yeah. getting organized as a company. Yeah. Because we had reached that 70 people per, uh, you know, team size. And we had reached that point where we didn't have a choice but to be very organized now yeah. from go, you know, going forward. And we started building processes and yeah. setting up structuring every team properly and stuff because otherwise it would be chaos. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think every team so far, you know, we went from GitHub to Jira and help improve the, the way that the product team monitor. Obviously, since I was involved in the support team, we've changed support system. We kind of outgrew where we were before. And again, the process has changed. But as you say, as part of the process is changing internally, externally, we're also making changes. And, and as you mentioned, there's a lot of, kind of technical debt from years of development from obviously platform launched in 2019, but was years before that. We've got stuff we've worked on clients before that. And the same way that the app was built, starting with agency and then becoming its own, you know, ready-made system. The fact that we build everything in the cloud, deliver it to the user, that's unheard of. And it made the app completely affordable. But of course, there was technical debts that we've kind of taken on board and grown with. And then, like you say, this last year has been a year where we've worked really, really hard to close and to you know remove as much as possible we're still going to have more to do in the future mm-hmm. but it definitely changed the speed of the way we worked in the last year the biggest feedback we've always had is how do how do we run this site what's the performance like yeah. how do i get a hundred thousand views before we get to that topic let's go back <laughs> to the leadership team oh <laughs> <laughs> so i don't know we'll, we'll cover that that's an exciting announcement for, <laughs> for everybody uh but Let's talk about the leadership team. Uh, Mikey's role, Sarab's role, Michael's role, uh, your role, current and future. Yes. Uh, and uh, Jason's role. Uh, yeah, some of the leadership team, Sharon and so on. Um, so let's we'll start with Sarab and Mikey, I think. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so for those who are unaware, obviously we have two teams. We have an app team and a web team. And they work independently, but they also cross over a lot of the time. And Sarab was actually the leader of both teams for a very long time. He started as a developer. He's been a buddy boss for many, many years. And he became the leader and ran both of those projects and both of those teams. Incredibly taxing job and a tremendous task. And he's very technical. And so one of the biggest things we found is as we're trying to get rid of this technical debt, we needed to think about it a level higher than just the product and the architecture. And so for, for the logical step of who can help run the architecture going forward, how do we make sure we're future-proofing our database structure? How do we work with you know, other core members of the team to start thinking about the future of the product? And so that we don't get blocked in developing new features because of that background, or how do we get rid of the technical debt? And so, so, so Rob is now our technical product manager. His role there is to lead that. And that is a team that we started at the end of 2022, mm-hmm. yeah, we built the architects, but we never had a real leader of that team. Mm-hmm. And that's where Mikey really said, hey, part of this process means we needed architects. And you know, Mikey is our designer, one of our designers. He's been doing product strategy. He's been doing product design. He's been doing product management for us. And so it was an area where he kind of just naturally adopted, but it wasn't his forte. Again, for him, it was like, I want to make sure we move us forward in the right direction. And now, obviously, his role has changed. Mm-hmm. So Rob's going to take off that technical pressure, freeing up Mikey to focus a lot more on design. User experience. User experience, exactly that. Uh, and the features themselves and the vision for the future, the mm-hmm. strategy around that. Mm-hmm. Perfect. Awesome. And that then brings Michael back in, okay? Yeah. Because Michael, for the last couple of years, he's been involved everywhere, but not necessarily totally involved with the project mm-hmm. in, in terms of the way that what we're delivering next and, and how that's looking and so he's more recently now said okay if 
Mikey's moving to help with the designs more and the strategy. He's now going to come in and stop kind of probably going back to what he used to do and itching, yes. uh, scratching that itch again around what we're working on next. Yes, I've pushed Mike to jump back in into the product team and push for the new features that we want to build and make sure that they happen uh, within a reasonable amount of time and that he is the decision maker of what happens next in the product, the final decision maker. Uh, so everyone else in terms of this topic works as advisors, Yes, but he has a final say. And I needed that because I know that Michael can, um, you know, make really good decisions on what should go into the product and what should not and, uh, and make, and make sure that things get delivered, you know, in a short amount of time that we don't just have scope creep everywhere. Yeah. Um, so, and obviously Michael has been working on another project, which we'll talk about, mm -hmm. uh, you know, later on, which he's been working on for over a year now, uh, and super exciting project. Uh, but he's also involved in the body boss product. So, um, coming to you now is again, you've been involved in so many different teams. And then last summer, I've told you that, Hey, Graham, I know that you're involved everywhere and I can see, you know, based on your work ethics, uh, your, you know, your understanding of our product, the fact that you were a customer before and your understanding of our, what our customers care about, uh, and you're still a customer, by the way. Yeah, using pro the product <laughs> as a customer. <laughs> uh, and um, given all of that, um, and given the time that we spent together working, I can confidently say that you would be really good at running Buddy Boss. Um, so I asked you to become the managing director of Buddy Boss, and we've decided that we're going to have some transition time, and that by this year. Um, basically this summer, yeah. you would take, uh, take that role. Um, and that gave you time to kind of understand everything that's happening and move into different teams and see what's happening everywhere. Uh, but I feel you have the drive and the energy to run this. And I have never been able to properly do my CEO role, yeah. uh, which is to look for the vision, to look for the financial, to... Uh, think about what where where this company is going and do the higher level uh, decisions. Where I've been always busy in the day to day, making sure that everything is just happening properly. Yeah. Uh, but over the last twelve months, I've been slowly taking myself out of that uh, and having you take over a lot of things. So you've been running the leadership team calls, uh, working with all the different leaders in the company, and so and. I'm working closely with you, but you're working with everybody else. And you and Shelby, basically, who was running operations and Michael. So we've been working together, the four of us. And then you're working with the rest of the team. Uh, and that's been going very well so far. And uh, I haven't been involved in the day-to-day -day no. of Buddy Boss. Uh, I'm still involved in some areas, but um, nowhere near where I was before. No. Um, uh, again, it, it's been a nice long transition. We spoke about this last year, and even up until December last year, I, we were saying that I, I really want to push the product team further forward before we start taking on too much responsibility. Uh, and I feel honoured, and, and you know, I love working here, as you know before. Um, but it has been a long time coming for you to help get away from the day to day and focus on the bigger picture. Yes, you know, we've been working on some tasks now, up to a year, slightly over a year that you need to spend some time on. And for us to go to the next level and to focus on the bigger picture, we need a CEO that can elevate that to the next picture. Yes, and I've been neglecting um, building relationships with other people in the ecosystem. I've been neglecting uh, working on a vision and like the bigger picture of where we're going. And we, we've kind of set the picture a long time ago, the vision a long time ago. Um, but I don't get an, a lot of thinking time to really think about you know, where we're going, but it's starting to happen. And yeah. with the shift, I'm now more focused on, on the future and what, where we want to go. And, 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 um, I'm going to start getting, uh, you know, focusing more on building relationships with other 
people in the ecosystem and build partnerships and so on. Yeah. And I'm, I'm very excited to see the change. I know the team are also very supporters of this. I mean, we've, we've seen a, a few of the teams this year and starting from WordCamp and you were very quick to announce the, the role change <laughs> to everybody there. And, but I've, I've received overwhelming support yeah. from people I've worked with and That's you know, true. We, we built a really good family. We say family and a, a lot of companies say family when they talk about it, but we really are a family. You know, we share so much together. Yeah. You know, one of the things that people love, we do birthday cakes every year to every employee. Yeah. We truly are a family and everyone I've spoken to, um, yeah, believes in the product, believes what they're doing, feels valued at what they're doing. Um, but also understands that the company's got a scale and, and you need to, um, to handle other tasks beyond what you've been doing now. And this family concept didn't actually come from reading a book or finding a keyword somewhere or like uh, reading a business book. Uh, it actually came from the fact that I used to work so much that my family was my team. <laughs> I did not see my family. <laughs> so I was like, this is my family. And these are the people I care for and they care for me. And we're going to work together as a family. And, and especially in the past, I was really, really close to all the team members because the team was smaller. Yeah. Now I don't talk as much to everybody, uh, but uh, at the time I was really close to everybody and I could tell like how each person felt in any day just by, you know, I was always talking to them. I knew how this person was feeling and how this person was feeling. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's how family came about. And, and let's be fair, one of the one of the moments I remember when we went to India and we saw our, uh, our team there, a lot of the developers, it turned out we had some people from, from other departments as well. You and Michael could name every single one of them. It may have been a face that wasn't slightly familiar, but as soon as you knew, oh, I know who that is. <laughs> and every single person, we had almost 40 people there. Yep. You knew every single one of them, which yeah. is pretty impressive. Not a lot of CEOs would know, yeah, well, 150, 150 plus people. people. Yeah, yeah. But uh, with every person there, you have a memory. Yes. Uh, and whether it's a memory in person or it's a memory on, on Slack or online on a video call, there is a memory with every single person. Oh, that's the guy who was doing that and that happened. And that's the... <laughs> You're the one who, were who, was, who, who was managing that, that, that piece, you know, that project and stuff. And uh, so there's always um, uh, a memory there. So coming back to you now, as true CEO... And you've been working on a, a quiet project internally. We're all excited for it. We have a couple of customers who, who know more about it, yeah. but this is now time for the vision. Where do you see Buddy Boss going right now? And more importantly, what do you see over the next 12 months, which is okay. the key one? So what I want to start off with is that, um, I read comments and I read reviews and I read, um, posts in 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 uh, in the community and i see what everybody's saying all the time and and i'm not the only one who does and we're listening to all those things and we're seeing them but um oftentimes the solution is not something that we can deliver next month yeah. um but it helps to shape the strategy of where we're going for sure uh because we can see the pain points and it gives us ideas and we um, we, we, uh, take from that. Um, and it's really helpful all that feedback is really helpful. Um, and so one of the biggest pieces of feedback we've got, we've been getting over the last couple of years since the launch of the buddy boss app is, um, my app is slow or my buddy boss website is slow. Um, and that's not from everybody. For those customers who figured out how to have a proper, like custom built um, hosting setup, it's been working really well. Um, for some customers who have been using other hosting companies and didn't have that much, a lot of traffic, it's been working fine. But then for those who are trying to scale on various hosting companies, on various hosting platforms, uh, they've struggled. Uh, and We've um, advised customers to use certain hosting companies because of also the ease of use of the platform because we couldn't really send them to something that's super technical. Uh, we can't expect everybody to know how to use those tools. Um, 
but there hasn't been any hosting provider that has been very adequate to our product. Um, now our products are not the typical products in the WordPress ecosystem. We're, we're, we're hoping you launch a community platform on WordPress. That's like thousands of users or hundreds of users or hundreds of thousands of users messaging each other and posting content and doing things like that. It's not a blog. It's not a website. It's not a simple WordPress site. There's a lot of activity happening at the same time. A lot of database hits. Yes. It uses a lot of server resources and that's, that's what it, that's what it does. And there's no way around it. It that's, that's the product. It's a community platform. That's what, it, that's how, you know, that's what, how it's meant to work. Arguably that's the sign of a successful community. When you've yeah. got concurrent users, high traffic and a lot of dynamic content being created by, yeah. by your users. Then come the buddy boss app. Buddy boss app is headless. Um, and. It works by sending API requests to WordPress and, and then displaying them in the app, um, in a, you know, using React Native. Um, and what we found with a lot of hosting providers is that they block those requests. Yes. Um, and I could only assume that the reason for blocking those requests is that it's using too many more, more resources than they, they want to to give you as a customer. Yes. And so they start blocking those requests because they don't want you to run out to run, you know, to, uh, to use too much of their resources. Exactly. Uh, so, uh, we thought hard about this problem. Um, and while we were thinking about this and kind of evaluating what we should do, uh, there was one person in the community that stood out and that's Wes and Wes was helping customers, buddy boss customers create a custom setup for their buddy boss sites. That was really good. That was exactly what we're, what, what, you know, how, you know, what a buddy boss site needed. Yes. Uh, now historically as a company, we didn't have a background in hosting and server management and that was not our area of focus. Uh, but Wes has been doing this for many, many, many years and he's got more technical experience than any one of us he's been working on on this stuff since the beginning of the internet yes he wrote books on netscape <laughs> when it when it when it, you know back in the day when netscape was a thing uh so he's he's a genius when it comes to this stuff so we kept hearing wes's name on and on and on and on and then i asked you hey can you reach out to wes i want to talk to him <laughs> See if you can join us. Yes. So we spoke to Wes and Wes had a, at that point helped hundreds of customers um, build a solid um, um, infrastructure for their body boss sites. And interestingly enough, typically those are the customers that were super happy with our product uh, because their website was going fast. And, and, and again, these are the, these are all customers that were, working to scale their community and, and, and app. And these were more on the successful customers, uh, that were doing a lot with our products. So we did, had a discussion with Wes and we said, Hey, um, you're helping these customers and you do an amazing, uh, and you know what you're doing and whatever recipe you came up with to really tune these ser servers is working really well. Why don't we, why don't you come into the team? Join us. We build a team around you. We invest money into this and we do something that's bigger, um, that is scalable, that serves all of our customers. Yes. Um, and that's when we started building Rapid. And that was just over a year ago where we started building Rapid. Um, and Rapid is a cloud hosting platform uh, that is built for dynamic WordPress websites initially. When we talk about dynamic, it's these websites that require a lot of database requests and, and like, like communities, like e-learning, like when you have a hundred students taking the same quiz at the same time, and they're all seeing a, dif a different version of the same page yes. of your WordPress site. So 
this is not, these are not situations where you can use um, a, a caching plugin Cache. to cache the page and it will serve it fast and it will, um, you know, like the plugin Rocket is the- Yep, WP Rocket. WP yeah. Rocket, you can't use Rocket in this situation because it's not a static WordPress site. It's not a static page that you're caching. It's personalized to each user. Each user is seeing a different version of the same thing. So that means lots of database requests simultaneously, concurrent users. And PHP workers, right? And PHP workers. How many, how many of these hosts limit PHP workers, which right. cause concurrency issues? Yes. And so, and that can happen also in WooCommerce sites uh, where you're doing, you're running a promotion and you have tons of people in the checkout trying to check out. And they're all looking at that checkout, but they're all seeing different things. They're not seeing the same page and you can't cache that. And um, we wanted to build a solution that can handle these kind of situations well. Uh, and that was built with this in mind from the ground up. And working with Wes over the last year, we've built the best hosting service, cloud hosting service, for dynamic WordPress sites. It's, I've never seen something faster than this. And I think you haven't either. No. <laughs> Fortunately, being inside Buddy Boss, I have experienced it. Yeah, um, no. <laughs> obviously, we've got some of our customers who have had past problems in the past, especially some agency customers who are also already using this. And yes. So we feedback is tremendous. <laughs> we've moved some of our clients to the Rapid platform. Uh, and it's been working yes. really awesome. Um, and when there was a moment where they were not happy with the app and moving them to rapid hosting completely changed their, their perspective uh, on, on the BuddyBoss app. Absolutely. To the point, I mean, as a company, they're going for seed investment and they are so happy with us. So like, yeah, we're, we're good. We're really good. We're going to go for more investment now. You know, the company's great. Yeah. And hosting was the only problem holding them back. Yes, so we spent years innovating on this new product that the WordPress ecosystem has not caught up yeah. into. You know, they no, the ecosystem didn't caught up to this um, innovation uh, where you're running headless apps. Um, and the WordPress hosting providers are not focusing on this problem. No. Um, and that's not their biggest um category of customers or their biggest audience but there is a big audience of community platform builders of course online course creators of um woocommerce woocommerce is huge um and these solutions they need adequate hosting and that's what we're doing with rapid and more importantly it was in addition to this not only was has it been fine-tuned you know wes has done an incredible job of fine-tuning the setup yeah you know working on the caching side so that we can benefit from Redis caching and, and working with some of the industry leaders in that area as well. And yes. But in addition to that, one of the other pain points is scalability. You know, how many of these hosts you go onto and you can't scale. I mean, this was one of the big things when Wes was talking to me about it. It blew my mind how much we can now scale communities. Yeah. Scale sites. Yeah. Yeah. Automa automated scaling, predictive scaling. Um, and it just... It just works. It's it's unbelievable. It's magic. It just yes. works. <laughs> and, uh, Michael has been very involved in this project, uh, more on the user experience side of things, uh, and we're we're very close to a beta. So I think one or two months uh, from a beta, and we'll be fully live before the end of the year. Uh, so super exciting, um, and this is not only going to solve problems for a number of audiences in the WordPress ecosystem, but first and foremost, it's going to make our Buddy Boss customers a lot happier because they're going to have the ideal hosting solution for the products that they use, uh, which is amazing. I, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a dream come true yeah. uh, that we're able to do this. Um, and and so let's be fair the other part of this is supporting right if there's a problem on your site with, with buddy boss platform or with buddy boss app 
or of hosting, we can help you on all three parts. So right, right. Because, yes, I guess because it's our product, so we our our support teams are going to be interacting together. Yes, um, and it's it would be it will be the ideal hosting platform for a Buddy Boss customer, uh, but also for anybody who's doing cool things with LearnDash or Tutor LMS or any any kind of dynamic plugins, uh, WooCommerce, um, um, some of the job sites. Uh, anything that requires, um, that, you know, that, that is not just a simple static WordPress site, um, is going to benefit from this kind of hosting service. Um, and the power, um, you just, you you, you have your plan, but we allow you to like spike up the, 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 the resources whenever you need it. So you're doing a, um, a launch It'll, it'll help handle the spike and then bring you back down to the resources you need. Um, um, and if you're doing a, an email promotion or whatever, it'll handle the spike. So you're doing an event uh, on Zoom. We're using BuddyBoss platform. It'll handle the spike. Yeah. And so with a lot of these hostings, you would have to increase your plan to, um, to just because you had this one event where for 48 hours, you were going to have lots of traffic so you've increased your plan and it's even hard to go back. And you're predicting that you're getting lots of traffic. A lot of this time you have to do it before you've even launched. Yes. You know, the fact is with, with Rapid, you don't have to predict it. If it goes up beyond your capacity for a spike, we'll boost it. it. We'll boost it. Yeah, yes. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, before it settles down again. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, how many agencies and customers have launched a product only for the site to go down, which is the worst experience ever. Yeah. Um, yeah. Stuff so, like this is really important to us and rapid's gonna have all these wordpress tools um because all again um a lot of hosting well most of the hosting companies don't take special care into work having wordpress tools in their in their in their panel and the wordpress experience uh some of them do but not all um and i was i was um i was at cloud fest um back in was like march march yes back in march and this is the biggest cloud conference uh, in the world. It was happening in Germany. And all of the cloud hosting companies were there. Um, and there was a WordPress day. And I overheard conversations where people were saying that you'd be surprised how much these hosting companies don't know about WordPress. Uh, so... Um, us coming from this WordPress background, we're actually building Wor WordPress specific tools within your experience, dashboard experience, uh, that you can use to manage your plugins, to manage your themes, to manage your BuddyBoss apps, um, and just making your life easier. And as you mentioned earlier, the beta is out soon. It's out um, soon. Yeah. yeah. And we get some feedback. Shouldn't be too long, really. Should be about two, three months before we go uh, fully live. And if yeah. you are watching this or listening to this on our monthly update video, we're going to show a sneak peek. There will be some yeah. screenshots of... Uh, we'll show us some things. We might even throw one in, in yeah. on this podcast. Um, and um, yeah, pre-launch will be... Uh, beta will be soon. Uh, we will communicate how to enter the beta. Um, and then we'll transition from the beta to be fully live. Uh, we are doing a little bit of a private beta internally right now with some of our clients. Um, but in a couple of months, in a month or two, we'll be going for a bigger beta with more customers. And that will be the official, uh, the official public beta. Yeah. And this private beta has been really targeted to people who had specific pain points that we wanted to measure that we're fixing. Yeah. So whether it's a scalability problem or large databases or certain types of, of media yeah. coming in. So we're very targeted just to a small audience, but we're may, making sure that we're hitting the markers. Yeah. And so I'm very excited. I, Ooh, what I can me. say, the app <laughs> is phenomenal on good on hosting. Yeah, on yeah. good hosting, it is phenomenal. And it is, you know, every time I talk to a customer, I share my phone and I'm opening and I'm like, how is your app working that fast? And I'm like, ah. <laughs> yeah. Good hosting makes a massive difference. Yeah. So finally, we're going to have hosting that is right for body bus products yes um unfortunately we couldn't have it before because no one has built it and we had to build it on our own 
Uh, and here it is now. It's coming out. <laughs> Super excited. Yes. And so Rapid is going to be operating as a separate entity um, with shared leadership. Uh, but there's going to be a totally separate support team, which will be communicating linked to the Buddy Boss support team yes. uh, for any Buddy Boss related issues. Um, and um, we're building a, a new leadership team. Some, some, of, some team members are moving from Buddy Boss to Rapid, uh, but we're also hiring a number of new um, 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 team members. Um, we just hired some people uh, just uh, yesterday. I was approving some new hires for Rapid, uh, including some ex Cloudways employees. Uh, Cloudways ha have been acquired recently, which means they're making a lot of changes. And um, as a result, a number of people have been let go. Um, and so it was an opportunity for us to um, be able to uh, attract some of that really good talent that they had. Uh, to join this new project, uh, Rapid. And a lot of them have Buddy Boss experience, which was perfect. You know, they're, they're, they're excited to start. And again, you know, having hosting support is is essential. And, and we've already spoken before about yeah. you know, the support differences between Buddy Boss and hosted will be very different. Well, providing customer support for Rapid is going to be a lot easier yes. than providing customer support for Buddy Boss. Yes. Because the customer support team at Buddy Boss they can't, they're, they can't handle everything on their own. They're dependent on the product team. Exactly. Resolving issues. Um, and it's not like with hosting. With hosting, the support team is going to be able to get a lot done very quickly, which means we're, get, we're going to be able to do chat support. We're going to be able to solve solutions instantly, uh, solve problems instantly. But with Buddy Boss, it's not always possible. And... A lot of times the support team gets a lot of heat, but it's not the support team. It's what's happening in product. Yeah. Uh, but we're rapid. We won't have that problem. No. So um, I'm excited to see how the support is going to be in, in rapid and we're going to work hard to make it the best. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. I have no doubts about it. Yeah. Development is very complex and, yeah. and that's the part that's kind of part of parcel having especially with dynamic sites. I mean, things have been, uh, pretty complex over the last couple of years of how much we've changed. Yeah. So, and, and with that, with Rapid coming on, uh, and Wes is going to be um, leading the Rapid entity, um, and you're going to be leading the Body Boss entity, and I'm there in the middle, working with both of you, uh, and making sure that we're going the right direction, uh, and, you know, discussing the vision, discussing the day-to-day -day with you, uh, and Wes to figure out where we're where we're going. So that's going to help me a lot in being able to be between the two and the two the two brands, um, and um, with you guys pushing on the day to day operations. And so with the hosting resolved, and obviously with the, the software of of Body Boss platform, that's going to lead us. Where's the, yeah, where's the future? <laughs> you know, as CEO, yeah. the vision. So I know you can only share so much. Yes. Oh. So. Um, Let's go back to Buddy Boss. So with Buddy Boss, we've done a lot of improvements into the way we're doing things, but also the foundational yes. um, ways of th how things were done under Buddy Press. And now we're moving into starting to, again, be more aggressive into feature building. And so the, the rest of this year is focused on activity feed and making the activity feed much better with new features, with things like reactions, things like um, hashtags, things... So we have a number of features that we're aiming to to release soon, and that's the focus the rest of this year, right? Um, and when it comes to and and then there's another bigger kind of step that we wanted to take with Body Boss that we've been dreaming of taking since 2016, 17, 18. It was a dream, is to launch Body Boss Cloud is to bridge the gap between um, you know, the technical user and the non-technical user, allowing the non-technical user to quickly spin up a Buddy Boss site and get, get, you know, start running their site right away, and um, allowing them to also then add the app to it and, and get it launched very, very rapidly. So with Rapid coming into play, 
we have now built a, inf a cloud infrastructure that we're going to be able to leverage to launch Buddy Boss Cloud, which would be our next big focus, along with all the improvements and all the feature uh, uh, launches and all the um, improvements to the product itself, uh, including the um, admin onboarding, the customer, on the user onboarding, and all the different things that we're going to do to make the product easier and better to use. Um, the next big thing after that is going to be to release uh, Buddy Boss Cloud. And this was a stepping stone. So for the rest of the year, we're going to focus on uh, on the rapid side, getting rapid launched. And then after that, we're going to start leveraging that for Buddy Boss Cloud. Yeah, and that would be a next tier project. It's important to, to comment and note here, this doesn't remove Buddy Boss Platform. Buddy Boss Platform can be self-hosted yeah. and that's continue. But we do have a large amount of customers who have tried Buddy Boss and said, I like it, but I need a simpler version or I like it, but I can't handle the hosting. And that is what this helps to address. Yeah, but along the way to BuddyBoss Cloud, we will then be making a lot of changes to BuddyBoss platform and theme to improve the features. As you say, onboarding is a big piece. Yeah, backend settings of uh, again, that's kind of why we're doing all of this restructuring now, mm -hmm. is that everyone benefits. We're going to have a lot more features. Yeah, this year we strategically decided to spend the first half of the year getting rid of technical debt right. and, and cutting that down. The second half of this year. I'm super excited for because it should be feature after feature now. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and we had to go through that because we're we're trying to modernize this yeah. piece of software and um, get it, you know, get all these new exciting features. If we want to do this, we're going to have to go back to the basics and make sure the foundation is solid and can withstand this in the long term. Um, Body Boss platform and theme, it's not a a two-year project or a three-year project. This is the product that we're we're going to continue to grow with and that's going to continue to improve and adapt and transform over the years. Um, so we have to be working on solid foundations if we want to keep moving in uh, into innovation and, and growth. And what about the app side? Obviously, we have something being released later this year that changes the way the app is seen by some customers, but ultimately for us as a product, just increases the vision. And this is a project that you've been working very closely on. Yes. Which is all the very foundational changes to how the app is built, uh, which is going to help us build faster, but also allow customers to be less dependent on custom development uh, with all the tools that you're adding that allow for them to integrate the app with other third-party plugins and do things a lot more easily. Yes. Talk about that. You know you know a lot <laughs> more about the intricacies of that of yeah. that specific project. Well, I think it's fair to say over this last year, I've spoken to hundreds of app customers. And one of the parts was I used to do regular calls with them. And, and it's become you know, a trend that we saw more customers lean into blogging and more lean into content. And so we've started looking at how can we help improve the success for that customer through content and so as earlier this year we released bookmarking functionality but also then we started looking further and it's like we, we want more customization we don't want a react native developer and we can't afford a react native development on top of our wordpress development and so that big goal is to how can we make this product more versatile while still keeping all the cool technology but making it easier to work with so as you say, we're working on this new block, which will enable plugin developers to use PHP code that will essentially rewrite for React Native. That opens so much potential. And one of the more recent changes we've made internally is we started working with someone who's already in the company as almost a business relationship manager to reach out to integrations now to say, hey, would you like to integrate with the app? It's going to be very simple. Here's how you can do it. And we're super excited, you know, custom post type support, doing these types of block changes, essentially making this app not only just for community features or for e-learning features, but to be able to expand above and beyond that. And, you know, there's that world where it can work with multiple audiences, but everyone gets to benefit along the way. And, and that's really key. We're not launching another app version. There's no such thing as a 
you know, version this of the app. It's one product that we will continuously expand upon, make it more feature rich, keep working on there. Again, there's a lot of technical debt that we've worked through this year. And, you know, going forward, we've got a lot more architecture changes coming forward. Right, right. But the app is a very good place now in terms of stability. It's a very stable product. Yeah, uh, for sure. But, but then now you're adding, you're you're also rewriting a lot of the app to open the way to this new kind of innovation structure yeah. uh, that's going to allow us to um, build these blocks that make it a lot easier for plugins to integrate with us. So that's super exciting. Very yeah. exciting. Yes. Yeah. And that, that means the Buddy Boss app is no longer going to be its own closed, some semi-closed system where we're integrating with only the key plugins. It's going to be able to be linked with a lot of other plugins or anything yeah. else in the WordPress ecosystem. Yeah. Let's be fair. Open source for Buddy Boss platform is one of the main things that we're very keen to keep open, very keen to support. Yeah. It helps so many of our customers. And we can't be the only company developing at the pace that customers want. We yeah. want to make it easier for developers. Mm -hmm. And so I'm very excited for the app because up until now, it's been very hard for plugin developers to get involved. We have a couple of core integrations, as you know, um, and has, who we've worked with. But now we're about to open up the door to a lot more functionality. And we're looking forward to supporting these developers along the way. Um, and yeah. yeah, it's going to be very exciting next 12 months for sure. And as you say, at this point, you know, this will be going out in July. There are zero bugs that have been reported on the app team. We've closed every single bug at this point in July that's been reported. Mm -hmm. And we will continue to do that. So. Yes. And so now you're moving into aggressive feature building. Absolutely. Yeah. Grant, you're now the uh, managing director of Buddy Boss. And um, I'm excited for you to be in that position. I think there's no other better person for that position. Thank you. What does the future look like for you for Buddy Boss? Yeah, I mean, managing day to day, it's there's a lot of different moving parts, but for sure, I mean, we we're already trading in the right direction of where we're going. So if we split this down by department, you know, customer support has come a huge depth from where we've been for the last couple of years, and we've increased now. We've got live chat, we've got a new support portal, and we're going to continue offering the best experience possible from a support perspective. So some of the exciting things to look forward to, our technical support team will be joining us on live chat. We are looking right now at the ability to have phone support. Um, maybe initially in a limited capacity, but we want to look at all the other ways we can improve the support side of it all. At the end of the day, as we've mentioned many times, this is a very complex product and therefore customers do come to us on a regular basis for needs. So that's one area that I'm very key to keep expanding upon and using feedback to, to improve upon. One of the more exciting things that we've kind of done over the last couple of years is start looking at customer success. Yep. Rather than relying on the reactive side of support, be more proactive on success. So one of the things that we're going to see over this next year is a customer success team that reaches out a lot more, that listens to feedback, brings it into the company for us to internally discuss and start helping it influence and direct what we should be doing next. If we look at how much of the app after launch we have actually taken from feedback, like access controls that came out of customer feedback. If we look at email digests, which is something that we're only just about to announce. Yeah, exactly. Yes. It's it's something that we didn't even have on the roadmap this year. Yeah. We heard feedback from customers from our customer success team. It's already happening. It's in development right now, yes. Amazing. And so again, I'm still customer. You know that I have a community on the side still that I'm not running, but I'm managing the technical side. And at the end of the day, I still think like a customer. And I really want us to be a customer experience focused company. And that is something that every team is starting to be more kind of apparent to and applying in a day to day. So support and success is going that direction. Obviously, we've got a lot of changes in the product team already. But part of that now is rolling out features faster as we have started removing this technical debt, build a very high performing team, a very much scalable product and start listening to customer feedback and iterate on our features. This year has been a really good testing point where every month we've released a feature or an enhancement 
and we've listened to feedback straight afterwards and we've made further updates. So when we did the profile URLs, we heard a lot of feedback about how we wanted to improve that and, and we will continue to do that. And now we're going to be even more aggressive in doing that. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This second half of the year, we are going to be so much more aggressive. Mm -hmm. As you've already led to, you know, activity feed is going to be a very core part of the rest of this year for us because it hits the biggest pain points for a lot of our customers and it is arguably our most important core component. So doing things like hashtags and polls, closing comments, sharing activity internally, being able to schedule your posts. Now I'm not committing to timelines, and, but and this is what we're working towards this year. Everybody here, everybody watching this that has been a customer for a while knows that I'm all about excitement, about new stuff, about build, you know, making the product better. And so internally, there's always a fight between me and the product team, <laughs> uh, where I'm like, I don't, I need more stuff. I need, I didn't, and the product team's like, no, 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 we need to improve what we have and we need to make it more yes. solid. I understand that. And now we're kind of starting to like shift back to feature, what I, feature. what, what I like to see. Yes. <laughs> I, and I totally understand the value of what we've been doing yeah. uh, over the last couple of years, but I want to see some fast improvements and some, um, you know, uh, innovations in the product. And I'm happy that now the team is starting to shift towards that. And that makes me feel good about it. Yeah. And, about. and it's exciting, <laughs> right? Let's be fair. Everyone loves a new feature. These kind of bugs, it's, a, it's part of business. It's part of having a software company. Yeah. But of course, you know, last year you put into your update video about how much we were going to close bugs. And we've done that. And, we, and we've yeah. cleared the backlog. And so... Now it's time. Pretty much, I think in a month or two, you will have cleared by on both products, yes. not just the app. Yeah. Um, and it's going to be more, most of the time is going to be spent on developing yes. new features. Yeah. This year, 80% of our development time has been bug fixing and 20% on making a new feature every month. We wanted to commit internally to at least one feature and a win for customers, even though we are closing bugs. Now it's now completely you, 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 you switch is shifting that. Yeah. 80% yeah. new features enhancements. The architect team are building a backlog ready for us. Obviously, we've got this new direction with Michael more involved, Mikey and Sarab. Together, this kind of product leadership team are going to be giving us features continuously and we're going to deliver one by one. We're going to listen to customer feedback. We're going to apply back. We're going to release features more rapidly with the purpose of listening to feedback I and mean, then adding more functionality to it. You, you mentioned customer feedback a lot and I want to touch on the community. Ah, so, yes. uh, let's talk about the community. Um, historically, I think we used to run customer support through a Buddy Boss forum. Yes. Uh, a long time ago. Uh, but we had reached a point where we had so many customers, so many, um, you know, um, posts on that forum that we needed a proper ticketing system to manage the customer support. Yes. So we moved away from the forum and I know that some customers saw that as kind of like a, um, a negative thing of like moving away from the product, but we needed a proper customer support, um, software to run customer support. Since then, um, I don't know how many years back now and after we launched buddy boss theme and platform, Francisco, who was part of the team and kind of joins us every once every once in a while and as a you know, as a contractor to help us with various things in the business. Uh, Francisco had launched independently before we even met him uh, a Facebook group. Yes, um, and we kind of were forced into it. We didn't have a choice but to uh, jump in and kind of make it the official group. Um, but we are going to launch a Buddy Boss Powered Community. Yes. Um, and but before launching the Buddy Boss Powered Community, we wanted to have the team that can actually run that community because launching a community is not just the software. It's also what you're going to do, how are you going to run this community, what your what benefits are the users going to have and all, the, and all that. So we had to work on that, which was not a priority before because we had so many other priorities, so many other things that we were focusing on. It was impossible for us to do all of this stuff at the same time. Yes. But now we're finally gearing up for that. 
Uh, and we're also preparing content for the community and things like that that's going to be launched as part of the community. Um, and so I know that Jason's working on a lot of that content. Um, and as that content's ready and we'll be launching the, the new community and probably later this year. Uh, yeah, that, I think this year is very achievable from yeah. what we're doing. I know we're building a good team around this. Yeah. There's a lot still to go, but at the same time, what I'm seeing is incredible. And yeah. again, it is a need for us, but at the same time, it couldn't come ahead of our and, products. And that's going to be a community where we're actually going to be inviting people to. Yeah. Uh, because so far, the Facebook group that's been there, we haven't been actively inviting people into the group. Um, so the actually amount of people in the group don't re doesn't reflect the amount of customers that use Buddy Boss. Um, and um, we have thousands of people, uh, tens of tens of people that are using Buddy Boss. And um, once we launch uh, the Buddy Boss Powered Community, we'll be inviting everybody into that community. Uh, and I'm excited to see that. So and um, it's going to help us put even more focus on um, listening to customers. Yeah, I was going to say, and more importantly, it's not just going to be community of our users, but we're going to include our onboarding for the app customers there. Yeah. So you're now going to be in a cohort group of people who are all going through this with right. you. But in addition to that, part of this is that we want to do streaming on there ourselves or videos yeah. on ourselves, uh, open yeah. hours and conversations and really actually give you far more details and be more transparent about what's coming up. And yeah, so it's and a two-way conversation absolutely. between us and um, the customers yeah. in, the, in this new community. And you mentioned live streams. Yes. Um, using the WP Stream WP integration. So we're going to be doing live streams um, in the Buddy Boss community. Um, so I can't wait to see that. Yeah, it's going to be a great early insight for customers. If they're using the community, they will see stuff we're working on. They'll be able to ask more direction. True. And we're also going to be using it as a testing ground for new features. True. Exactly. Uh, before they make it into core uh, or be released as, as their own plugins. Yeah. So that's, yeah, that's also um, a benefit because we're going to be starting to kind of test new features there before they go out into the product. Exactly. And obviously one of those parts that right now you're doing and you're doing the monthly updates at which I know switch to bi-monthly with all the transition we've been doing. Yes. But, but uh, Part of this change would also be, yeah, you know, we have an incredible leadership team around us. And part of what I'm working towards now is to make sure that, you know, our customers see that we're not just a couple of people. We are a bigger company and that all of the leadership team are going to have far more input into helping us produce these monthly updates. You'll see a lot of faces and hopefully you'll feel more influence across the team. And that team themselves, the leadership team, will be far more accessible to others because right. they want to hear your feedback. Right. And in the last year, as I, as you started transitioning into this role of running Buddy Boss, and I started transitioning out of the role um, of running the day-to-day -day operations, I've been less connected to the details of what's happening in each team. Yeah. Um, and I'm more aware of the bigger picture of what we're doing and what we're focusing on. And so for these update videos that I've done in the recent uh, months, I've had to lean lean in on your on what you had to say yes and i had to ask you to tell me what's going on here what's going on there and, and so that i can actually produce uh those update videos especially because they're very product focused and i think that's what customers have you know um, asked for in the past that they want those update videos to be product focused um based on some of the comments that i've seen in the past so and i think going forward Providing up-to-date, detailed product updates should not be coming from me, should be coming from you and the rest of the product team. Um, I think I should continue to have a presence on our social media channels, on video, um, doing other things, um, vision, podcasts, different things that, that are not connected to the day-to-day. -day. Um, and then you and the rest of the team are going to take uh, um, the lead on keeping our customers up to date with what we're up to within yeah. in Buddy Boss. So longer going to be me telling you guys, telling everybody, hey, uh, I'm excited to tell you what we're up to at Buddy Boss. What we were up to at Buddy Boss in the last couple of months or the last month. You guys can do that. Yeah, exactly. And it's important to say, for customers worried, you're still there. You're still going to be 
involved heavily across the bit. They're not going to see. This is not the last video we're going to see for you. For no, sure. no, still the part of that vision. It's just that that I I have to be talking about different topics. Yes. Than that, and the fact that I'm no longer involved in the day to day of the products and different areas of the company, um, I'm not the best person to give those kind of updates. Yeah. Uh, but. I'm still talking to you multiple times a day, <laughs> <laughs> making sure I'm, top of, I'm on top of uh, what, what we're up to. Exactly. But I won't be able to talk about the very details of like, oh, last month we launched this feature and yeah, last and then next week we're launching this feature. I don't know those exact now. Yeah, I was going to say, you're very much big picture features right now. Whereas more recently we've done what it's, it's not a small feature. It's very specific for certain customers that needed this penguin addressed. Mm -hmm. And so obviously this is the stuff that's in the front of me and, and I'm very well aware of the pain points as well from that. So again, in terms of the company, this is business as usual. Way more features though, because of all the work we've been doing for the last six to eight months. Yeah. We're going to focus on being very much customer experience driven. We know for a lot of businesses. This community is their lifeblood or the e-learning is their lifeblood of what they're doing. That's and therefore, none of this changes. We want to continuously providing a tool that satisfies that need. And you guys joining Buddy Boss reminded me, you guys were reminding me of how important Buddy Boss is yes. to so many of our customers who are running six-figure, seven-figure businesses using Buddy Boss yeah. uh, and who depend on this platform. I remember when we were in WordPress, uh, WordCamp Europe, uh, last year in June, I believe in Portugal, was it Portugal? Yeah, yes. it was Portugal. And, um, someone walked, uh, you know, and spoke and came to talk to me and he's like, Hey, I'm a customer and, um, we've, uh, we've used your product to build this website for our clients. And he did a million dollars in sales in the first, I don't know how many months or whatever, using your product and, and. There's not just one of these. There's a lot of them. And we forget, I forget how much of an impact the products are making. Um, and I love to be reminded of that because it gives me more energy to push even harder and build bigger things and, and um, push the team towards building bigger things. And it's really important. I always say this to the support team when they're responding to a customer. It's not just the customer we're helping. We're changing their customers' lives even more. Whether it's a course to learn a new skill, to you know better their lives, or a community that maybe someone feels like very isolated and they found a community to to help them. And obviously, we've seen a huge shift across social platforms where people want to take back control or are not so welcome in some of these platforms. This is where Buddy Boss stands in a yeah. point that you can control the environment, you can build a niche community or a community or an e-learning business. And at the end of the day, everyone can feel very welcome to something like that. Yeah, we've seen stories of uh, Facebook groups that got shut down for whatever reason. Yeah. Or for no reason. <laughs> that was my, my own community. Your own community my own shut down. Both of them are not welcome on Facebook. Wow. Of a topic. Um, wow. And so that was the whole need in the first place in 2015. Right. And so, absolutely. And then, Buddy Boss, you had full control to do whatever you wanted yep. to do. Um, and then we've also seen uh, customers, some of some customers, outgrow SaaS platforms like yes. Teachable, and where the business becomes bigger and they want to do more. Yes, but they're limited to the feature set that's available there. Whereas with open source and with WordPress, if the feature is not there, there is always a way. Yes, exactly. To make that change, to add the feature. Uh, especially as you become a more mature business, you want to have control. You want to be able to do whatever you want. You don't want to depend on the feature set that's provided by that company. And yes, we are providing a certain feature set. We can't provide every feature, but there's always that option that everybody has that they can add, they can build it. They're not completely locked out. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, SaaS companies, they serve a need, but ultimately if they make a change, that's it. You have to go with that change. Yeah. Of course, I'm not going to say, but we haven't made some updates in the past that may have made a wrong impact or missed impact. We do our very best and we also reflect changes when possible. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, you have way more control over your future with something like this. Yes. Scalability. And even the building an asset. Exactly. It's yours. It's, it's yours. And when you're, as a business owner, when you're selling the business, this is our platform. This is it's not It's not that we run our community on this platform and we're dependent on what they're going to do. 
Yeah. We own and control our platform. Exactly. Yeah, that's a big difference. And a lot of businesses, as they get, as they start getting more serious about what they're doing, they start to realize that they want to have that control. Yeah. And the barrier to entry, let's be fair, the barrier to entry is ridiculously low. You can start a social network for a very small cost and you can scale into a multi-million dollar uh, pound number they, sure. as you go along, which again is very hard with a lot of these The only barrier to entry that was a problem for us to solve was um, the fact that if you're not technical at all, it can be a little bit challenging to find a, find a host and yes. install WordPress and install BuddyBoss and so on. And that's what we're looking to solve with BuddyBoss Club. Yes. So like I say, hopefully, I mean, I've spoken to many customers. Hopefully, this is not the first time you're hearing from me or seeing from me. Well, you're, but, this is not going to be the, the, <laughs> the last time they're hearing from you. But, but, <laughs> but ultimately, the confidence here is we have an incredible team that are passionate, that are driven, that understand the need for, of the customers and continue to listen. And we are going to carry on in this direction, build far more momentum because we yeah. had to take that step back for the greater good and the bigger picture. Yeah. And I'm super excited to see what this next year looks like. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I lean on support and success because it's a big part of, of what we provide for customers and obviously the product. But even beyond that, you know, the sales team are becoming more involved now. We've got far more training. We've got the academy. We've got the community. There's going to be so much more that we're providing. The community to me is going to be very exciting to see mm -hmm. because it also gives us the, the best way to test this new stuff, to take feedback on board. But um, I'm very excited. And uh, again, you know, Buddy Boss has changed my life as a customer and now here working for Buddy Boss and I couldn't be happier. That's awesome. Yeah. And you guys keep reminding me that we have so many dedicated people in the company and it's true and they're doing an amazing job and they're working so hard towards making Buddy Boss better. Yeah. Um, and sometimes you forget, uh, but it's just unbelievable. Yeah. There's a lot of smiles inside Buddy Boss, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the fact that we've had people in the company for so many years, that proves something. Yes, yeah. especially in a remote world now. I mean, it's very easy to work remotely and just change company. You haven't built an allegiance or a culture yeah. I think you've proven that before we've proven COVID that. Yeah. and then when you kept, went into COVID where all these companies are struggling, Buddy Boss just, I mean, like I say, felt like a home. Yeah. And so uh, uh, if you, you and Michael have laid down solid foundation, really grassroots for a community and a, a company that understands culture as a great place to work, a great work fit and a great team around you. Yeah. Yeah. It's a blessing. So can we expect more of these in the future? More of what? These types of interviews, ah, uh, Tom Chidati. I'd love to. Yes, uh, I think that probably the next time we should try to get Michael and Wes over here, so we can do like a um, because uh, Wes obviously is, uh, Wes is based in Brisbane, Australia. Michael is currently based in Chicago, um, so we're gonna bring them into Dubai. Uh, I'm gonna try to make that happen, so we can do uh, uh, another session with them. Uh, yes. Good. Well, I think that's it. I mean, we've, it's been fun. It's been fun. Yes. And, uh, it was kind of a last minute request that I sent you, uh, <laughs> what, two weeks ago, seven days ago? Yeah. 10 days ten ago. Days ago, yeah, 10 days ago. I asked for you to come to Dubai so we could film this. Yes. Uh, and, uh, you didn't expect that you'd be landing here on the day I get married. <laughs> well, so I, I wanted to allude into this one, and honestly, you know what you want, you get what you want, you push for it, and uh, a huge congratulations, I land on the day, you get married, you then spend the afternoon with me as we're working through this, <laughs> and working through some other issues that we're trying to resolve, and, and uh, yeah, congratulations. Thank you. And um, Thank you. please leave a comment below for this one, because uh, yeah, like I say, it's been a a crazy but amazing journey so far and i'm looking forward to it but uh hey everybody i hope you enjoyed the podcast here this is the first time we've done a very much behind the scenes interview here with tom talking about buddy boss if you enjoyed it please leave a comment below and obviously the big bombshell tom did get married just the day before so i'd love for you to leave your well wishes and congratulations down below as well i'm sure it won't be the last time we'll be seeing him and thank you so much for listening